Hey everyone. Yeah, so right now I'm here with Dr. Ken Tindell, which is the CTO of uh, Canis Labs. He obtained his doctorate in real-time system from the University of York and has spent many years in the automotive industry, focused on tools and technology for in-vehicle real-time embedded systems. And his talk is about CryptoCon, encrypting messaging on Canvas. Of course, during the session, you can ask any question you might want on the question and answer tab or raise your hand and we will bring you at the end on stage. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm going to talk today about how uh, to do uh, encryption on Canvas. Um, Can was, of course, never designed uh, uh, for this, um, but uh, it can be done if if uh, if you do it right. So there's some very specific requirements for for Canvas, um, and in particular, the mainstream IT solutions for uh, for encryption uh, don't fit very well. Um, now, encryption on Can does help for for some problems. It can keep messages secret, uh, and it can uh, ensure messages are authentic, which stops the spoofing and fuzzing attacks. But it's not a, a complete uh, CAN security solution, so it doesn't prevent denial of service attacks, for example. So we have some very specific requirements for, for CAN communication. Uh, number one, we must support the published subscribe model. Uh, this is how CAN works. There's atomic broadcast from a single server to many receivers. Uh, and the uh, receivers, the subscribers, don't know uh, much about the sender, and the sender doesn't know who is subscribing. Uh, CAN's a, a distributed real-time control system. <clears throat> so all the messages must have bounded latencies. Uh, and we, number three, we must fit into can size messages, which is sm small payloads, uh, just eight bytes on, on classic CAN. And we must fit any solution into limited resource hardware. We're using tiny microcontrollers, limited CPU power, limited RAM, and limited flash memory. Uh, and probably most important of all, we must support fast start communication. So a receiver must be able to start listening long after uh, the sender has actually started broadcasting. So we're sending periodic messages. And a receiver may come in many seconds, or in fact may restart uh, after a watchdog timer reset or something else, and must be able to start communications without any special dialogue or startup process. So if we have a look at the, um, the messaging stack for any encryption system, uh, and particularly uh, on, on Canvas, uh, at the bottom are cryptographic primitives. Uh, so an encryption algorithm, uh, in this case, we're gonna be talking about AES with 128 bit keys, an authentication algorithm, random numbers and key distribution. And on top of that is the CAN messaging scheme. So we have plain text messages in, ciphertext out, and on the receive side, ciphertext in, and a plain text frame out. And then uh, above the, uh, uh, the messaging scheme, we have application software, which calls into the messaging scheme for its uh, messages, but it also calls into the cryptographic primitives for setting uh, and managing keys. So let's have a quick look at those uh, primitives. Uh, there are standard algorithms we should be using. We shouldn't be rolling our own encryption uh, algorithms. So we've talked about AES-128, AES-CMAC, uh, which produces a message authentication code, which uh, basically is a almost like a signature to prove that the message hasn't been tampered with. That's a standard algorithm and a random number generator. Now, the different implementations of those primitives, the gold standard is hardware security modules that uh, provide uh, all these algorithms plus key storage, secure key storage. But uh, there are systems with on-chip accelerators for AES. And so we would uh, roll software around that and then store keys in E squared or, or flash. And uh, we can implement a, a pure software uh, layer instead where everything is done, uh, AES, CMAC, and key storage is all done uh, in software. So if we just turn to hardware security modules, uh, I want to talk about the uh, SHE HSM, Secure Hardware Extensions. It's a common um, automotive uh, standard for uh, hardware security modules, and you find it on automotive uh, security uh, automotive silicon, like the uh, NXP device. It's been standardized by uh, Autosar, and it deals with key key management is the, is the key. So it has all the operations, but it manages uh, keys with key permissions. So you can have authentication or encryption keys, but you're not allowed to use those keys for, for both. Uh, and there are secure key loading operations. So that's, that's the key property, if you like, of the SHE standard. So 
Um, if we implement SHE in software, so we have a software hardware security module, uh, you can see the kind of uh, uh, sizes uh, and execution times uh, on this slide. So to generate a random number, 13 microseconds on a Cortex uh, M0, uh, here all these times. Uh, so it's about 13 microseconds uh, to do an AES or an encryption operation, uh, which is the, 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 the key features here uh, of all the other operations. Um, and uh, there are some variants if you, uh, if you choose to cache the round keys for AES, if, you, if you're familiar with the AES implementation. Um, the code sizes are actually pretty small. Um, to do it all in software, uh, to emulate a, uh, an SHE uh, HSM software is about 4K of code. Uh, and it's about uh, 2K of uh, ROM tables. Uh, and the round key cache costs about 3K. So uh, in many small devices, you, need, you can't afford the round key, uh, the round key cache. Um, but the other, otherwise, the RAM usage is pretty small. So uh, cryptographic primitives in the software are pretty easy. Um, now, the messaging scheme I'm talking about here uh, needs only some of the um, SHM functions, uh, encrypt, but it doesn't need decrypt, and it uses the uh, generate and verify authentication codes and random number generator. So you can actually skip a little bit of code uh, space there by removing the decrypt. Now, the sender creates a 128-bit uh, message, which is an AES block, which consists of the plain text payload, uh, the DLC, and uh, the 60-bit message authentication code. So that adds up to 128 bits, which is one uh, AES block. Um, and then once we've generated that, uh, that payload, um, we then encrypt it. So this is a, what's called a, a MAC then encrypt scheme. So the encryption uh, process is we start with a plain text uh, CAN frame, uh, generate the MAC for it, uh, and then encrypt that whole AES block through an encode process. That gives us a 128-bit encrypted message. Uh, but that doesn't fit into one CAN frame because that's 16 bytes. So we split into two frames, A and B. And A is designed to have a higher priority than B so that it's transmitted first. So we transmit it with the same uh, CAN ID. Uh, one payload uh, carries the first half, and the B frame carries the second. And in the uh, identifier um, for, for the B frame, we set one a one-bit flag. So the CAN ID varies by one bit. Uh, and that flag means that A ends up as a higher priority cat frame uh, and goes first. So on the encoding side, uh, we first of all generate a Mac. And we do that by creating a 128-bit message. And this isn't a communications message. This is a cryptographic uh, signature method, a message. So that consists of the CAN ID, the DLC, the payload, plus uh, a freshness value, which we'll talk about later. Uh, so uh, we use the HSM, either our software or hardware hardware security module, to generate the uh, the MAC. And that uses a standardized uh, algorithm, the CMAC algorithm, which produces a 128-bit MAC. Uh, but we have to truncate that to 60 bits. Uh, and we take the top, uh, top end bits. And then uh, we encrypt. And the encrypt here is not just about using uh, an encryption algorithm. It's also about using an encryption mode. So we take the previous ciphertext. And we run that through AES-128 encrypt with the encryption key. Uh, this is our, our payload of 128 bits we're going to send. Uh, we exclusive all the results of that into uh, the ciphertext. Uh, and then crucially, we feed that ciphertext back to the previous ciphertext. And that's why it's called the cipher feedback uh, mode of operation. So on the receiving side, we do the opposite process. Uh, we assemble the A and B frames, so A comes first, then we assemble the B frame, we make a 128-bit block, uh, we decode it, we check the MAC, um, and we either reject uh, uh, a system if the MAC hasn't matched, or we pass the, uh, the plain term, and that's, that's our application that message back again as it originally was. So... Twenty-eight encrypt uh, algorithm, the same as we had before. So we don't need the uh, AES-128 decrypt. And we take our ciphertext, we exclusive all that uh, with the previous uh, en encrypted, the previous ciphertext, and that gives us our plain text payload. Then we take our plain text payload, we run it through um, uh, with the authentication key, the CMAC algorithm, to verify, uh, and we compare the top 60 bits uh, well, with the received 60 bits. So uh, in that gray box is the original algorithm at the sender side, so they should match. 
If they don't match, they've not been uh, they've been tampered with, and we then verify. So SHE provides uh, generate and verify as two separate operations, and this is quite important. Uh, um, we'll come to back to in a minute. Um, so that CMAC is the underlying algorithm. Uh, generate takes that message and returns a MAC. Verify takes that message and a MAC and passes and fails. Uh, now the key must be given authentication permission. We can't use an encryption key here. So we need a pair of keys, one for encryption and one for authentication. Uh, now SHE plus, which is a slight twist to the SHE specification, adds a verify only permission. And this is really, really important because it means with verify only set on that, that key, you cannot generate Max. You can only submit them for verification. So that means subscribers can't uh, messages sent by uh, the publisher because they can only verify a Mac. They can't generate them. So this uh, freshness value uh, I talked about earlier, uh, the problem with cryptographic messaging um, is replay attacks. So we're protected against forged messages, but if uh, an attacker uh, sees those messages, captures it, uh, and then retransmits later, they, they aren't forgeries, so they will pass the, uh, the MAC verification. And an attacker can know what those messages mean based on context, and then just uh, have a little library built up and send one when needed. So we need to be able to prevent that. Uh, and the solution is to add a freshness value into that MAC calculation uh, I gave earlier. Uh, so the freshness is known at the sender and all the receivers. Um, it changes regularly. So it, it could be, for example, a global time value. And then captured messages with an old freshness value went verified because the freshness value is different uh, between the, the fake sender and the receivers. But uh, that known at sender and receivers is actually a bit of a problem here because the, the freshness uh, is uh, the value used when the message is created, but at the receiver, if the freshness has changed from the created time uh, to the received time, for example, the latency of the, uh, that frame B may be relatively long compared to the freshness value changes, then we don't know, uh, we can't verify it because the freshness value is different uh, at sender and receiver. So the receiver needs to know the freshness value that was used in the past by the sender. Uh, and because we don't uh, transmit the, uh, the freshness value, we can only infer it. Um, but but uh, the original freshness value must be relatively recent because can frame latencies aren't, aren't that long. So uh, the solution is to use some extra bits inside a can frame. Now, every eight byte can frame has three spare um, uh, application out of band data bits we could use, which is six bits across A and B because they're both eight byte frames. Uh, and the way it works is the DLC values of 8 to 15 all mean 8 bytes. So those bottom three bits uh, of the DLC value can be used for application data. So in this scheme here, A and B carry the least significant bit, bits of the freshness value. And then the receivers can actually work out based on their current freshness value and those bottom six bits, they can work out what the original freshness value was and then do, do that verification on the inferred freshness value. And then the freshness value can be used as a sequence number uh, and so any verified but already seen um, uh, values are stale messages and they can be rejected uh, as well. So that's the, the, the basic scheme. Um, we should look at some uh, performance figures uh, as I gave earlier for the, the cryptographic operations. If you're in a hardware security module, they're done very fast in hardware. So here, this is all done on um, an SHE plus software implementation of uh, the SHE uh, HSM. Uh, and you can see it's it's about 30 microseconds to create uh, an AB pair. And, and it's about half that each uh, to process frame A and frame B. Uh, so we, as each frame can, comes in, it takes about 15 microseconds or so of uh, execution time, uh, which is pretty reasonable. It's about 260 microseconds um, uh, on CAN bus for each 8-byte frame to actually be sent. So this is a small fraction. Uh, the code is actually um, very small. It's about uh, uh, one kilobyte. Um, again, on a Cortex M0. Uh, and the RAM is pretty moderate. So each transmit context, which is um, uh, for each um, source of CAN frames, or PGN if you're in uh, J1939 terms, uh, is about 24, it's 24 bytes on the, uh, the transmit side, and it's 40 uh, on the receive side. And most of that is to store the previous uh, ciphertext to run that CFB cipher feedback um, mode. So let's take a look back at uh, our requirements and see how we did. Well, we've done publish subscribe. We just talked about that. That works just like can. 
uh, the, the, uh, the publisher doesn't know about the receivers. Uh, the latency of frame B is the latency of that encrypted message pair uh, because it's the lower priority one that goes second. Um, so we have all of our timing analysis works uh, just as before. Um, we fit into uh, eight byte frames. We take two to make a pair, but it still fits with inside the classic uh, CAN framework. Uh, we fit on a Cortex M0. Um, all the figures have been given for that. So that's tiny microcontrollers uh, with limited CPU power. Um, and the CFB mode uh, provides this random access so that uh, we can jump into communication at any arbitrary time as a, as a receiver. Um, we will drop the first message because there's no previous ciphertext. But after that, uh, we, can, we, can, uh, we can pick up and, and decode all the messages we need to. So just a few uh, final remarks. Um, we need two CAN frames per plain text CAN frame. So we've doubled the bandwidth uh, cost, um, which is obviously uh, an issue. But we don't need to protect every CAN frame, only the sensitive ones, such as disable security, um, un unlock the doors, uh, odometer tampering, things like that. Um, the sender doesn't actually have to be on the, the CAN bus. The, the ciphertext frames could actually come from, for example, a domain controller via Ethernet or a tool that was connected up uh, externally or even uh, uh, in the cloud. So there are some uh, very interesting ways that you, could, uh, you can actually do this encryption um, without needing to be on the same bus segment. Uh, most importantly, key management is key. Cryptography is a nice quote I've seen here. Cryptography is a machine for turning any problem into a key management problem. Uh, so, and, and key management infrastructure around this is, is, uh, is vital. So who gets access to the keys, where they put in the database, how are they distributed in the factory, how are they distributed um, in uh, machine shops or for over the air uh, cloud services and so on. So that will be um, the, the most important part of any encryption system um, uh, in any vehicle is key management. Uh, just one last remark. Everything I've talked about today um, is actually part of our uh, CryptoCAN software uh, release. Uh, so we have um, a piece of so a software layer that implements uh, SHE plus in software. And that's where those performance figures came from. Um, and it's implemented in C with no dependency. So the API is structured not to require any specific CAN layer, or CAN driver API, or uh, any framework. And we've included it in, uh, for free in the CAN Pico MicroPython firmware. Um, so I hope to be able to demonstrate this a bit uh, later. Um, but our Pico board is our evaluation prototyping board, and uh, this can be accessed from, from MicroPython. It's a very easy way to learn uh, and, and explore how these systems work with just a couple of Python classes. Uh, now, and there are more features coming uh, to CryptoCAN. Uh, so uh, that key management, we're dealing with uh, 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 key distribution as an issue. SHE Plus has uh, <clears throat> those uh, uh, secure key loading uh, transactions. So we're building a, a tool to, to handle that. And we're building a tool to handle con command and control messaging. So if you are a um, diagnostics tool or something where you want to distribute keys, you need to be able to connect to a specific ETU and then each end authenticate the other to make sure that uh, you're talking to a valid uh, device and then manage its keys. So for further information uh, on this, uh, you can go to our website. Um, there's a white paper. If you just take a photo of the screenshot and. Uh, go to the URLs directly, you can download a PDF file of a white paper on encryption on CAN bus. And uh, we presented recently at the National Defense Industry Association uh, GVSETS conference in, uh, in the US, um, how to defend CAN bus. And part of that uh, includes uh, the, the cryptographic scheme, uh, among other things. So that's, uh, that's my presentation. I think we're open for questions now. Okay, so I'm back. Thank you. And so let's start with a few questions. Uh, as you said, the obvious. Um, okay, so the first one is to reach the goal of authentic authenticity. There are standard solutions like auto server secure and board communication. What is the benefit of this solution? Uh, okay, so uh, there, I know there's the uh, Autosar SecOc. It's actually in the same framework as uh, Autosar SecOc because it, uh, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's not a specific I I implementation. There's many, many systems within the same framework that are compatible. Uh, and this is part of that, that same framework, so it uses the same hardware. But uh, the way we've structured this uh, is so that uh, it doesn't require any APIs. So this is, this is a solution for, um, for all kinds of vehicles, not just uh, 
systems that have decided to use Autosar. I mean, it fits within that, but uh, it, it could be used for other, other purposes as well. The next question, uh, as I see regarding the ciphertext reuse in the next message, uh, can it supposed to be resilient to missing messages? How would this translate to your concept? Yes, that's that's a really good question. Uh, well, first of all, uh, CAN uh, doesn't drop, the CAN protocol doesn't drop messages. So uh, CAN is resilient to errors, but you don't. Missing, missing, missing messages with CAN. CAN's an atomic broadcast uh, protocol so that when the message is marked off uh, the sending CAN controller, every single online receiver has got, uh, has got that, uh, that frame. It's possible if you didn't do your buffering properly to uh, drop messages because uh, your, your interrupt handles didn't run uh, fast enough. Uh, so there is, a, there is a possibility of doing that. In essence, that's actually a broken system. So first of all, stop doing that. Uh, but secondly, if uh, if you drop missing missing messages, uh, you can pick up again uh, because of the way the, the cipher feedback works is um, uh, is effectively if you've gone offline and dropped messages and then you come back on uh, and and start, you can pick up from where you left off. Um, so that's part of the resilience on the um, uh, on the uh, the higher level uh, network management side, if, if you like. And the last question, unless someone will write uh, during the time, can you see the questions? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So HMAC, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, it's a message authentication code, so uh, you could use any of any any standardized uh, uh, cryptographic uh, primitive could be used. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the reason that uh, AESC MAC is used is that's the one in the, that uh, the SHE specification uses. That's the one that's then provided in the hardware security modules. Um, uh, which and because because everybody in the network has got to use the same uh, algorithm, um, so uh, uh, using something that the SHE uh, system provides is best. Um, in particular, SHE is an excellent uh, standard. If you're looking for any kind of um, hardware security modules, uh, the the guys that did the SHE specification were really top notch cryptographers, and it's an excellent piece of hardware. So that's one reason to use it. If your hardware is done uh, differently and it uses HMAC, then uh, that's fine. But obviously, everybody in the in the network has to use uh, has to use the same algorithm. Okay, sorry, just. One more question just added right now. People writing their questions uh, right now. The solutions uses a symmetric key based encryption. Decryption. How is the key management done in case the keys need to be uh, rotated? Yeah, that's also a good question. Um, so the SHE standard um, has a, an operation. Uh, I didn't have time to go into it because it's, it's, it's really quite complicated. Um, but it has a, an operation called uh, load key. Um, and it, there are inside the uh, SHM, there is a hierarchy of, of keys. So there is a secret key um, that uh, uh, should only be known um, from a central database um, that's tied to, to the unique serial number of the SHM. So this is all part of the SHE standard. So that when you want to change and rotate a key, um, you use the load key primitive and you generate um, basically an encrypted message message um, in, in uh, using the SHE algorithms. Um, containing the new keys with the new key permissions uh, and so on. And then um, you push that into the SHE. And so noth nothing in the way, it's an end to end solution. So nothing in the way can tamper with that because it's got authentication codes built into that messaging. Um, there's a, it's a complicated message system. And then it generates back um, uh, kind of a verification message that again is, in, is, is uh, encrypted and authenticated. Uh, and there's replay attacks and so on actually right inside the SHE hardware to do that. So that when you want to rotate the keys, uh, you generate uh, key update commands in effect from, from your tool that's got access to that key database. Uh, and then you, uh, then, you then you can change all the, 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 the lower level keys in the hierarchy. And there's, a, there's an ECU key, a secret key, um, an encryption key and stuff. So that there's a, a random number key. So that there's, um, there's a whole bunch of, uh, of key hierarchies in the SHE uh, specification. So, uh, if you if you go to the Autosell website and download the specification, um, it's it's really nicely done. So so this is the way around needing needing um, um, asymmetric public key encryption. Um, is it basically runs on secure keys? Okay, so I think there is time for one last question. 
uh, is the CryptoCan code for can pick already up or will it will be released later? I have got a release pending as soon as we can get the website updated, um, which might be today. Um, it'll be released. Um, if you want to drop me an email, I can I can tell you when it's in and uh, you can pick it up. Yes, yeah, so I just want to say, of course, that uh, you can meet, uh, they can meet you on the networking area yes. uh, to, to keep asking questions and, and talk. Thank you so much for your presentation. And uh, let's meet all in the next session. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.